There we go. And um, yes, Jeff yeah. is here. Jeff is here. So, oh, now I've lost Anne. Where did you go? I'm right here. <laughs> I know. I just get so many people. There we go, Anne. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to go ahead and introduce Jeff, and Jeff's ready to, to paint. I can see him. He's got sure. a okay. on. So I'd like to introduce our guest artist tonight, Jeff Wilson. Uh, as you're about to find out, Jeff was born in Scotland, where he trained as a structural geologist. He worked in mineral exploration around the world, and he now resides in Vancouver. Jeff has been painting full time for nearly eight years at his studio at the Portside Studios in Vancouver. He's well known for his uh, acrylic urban landscapes, neon signage, his junk food series, and graffiti train cars, to mention a few. He recently appeared in the Landscape Artists of the Year Canada TV show. His work is held in many public, private, and corporate collections around the world, and he's well represented by four commercial galleries, including Hamilton Galleries here in Kelowna. And uh, don't forget, Jeff is going to be hosting a workshop for our Central Okanagan chapter next spring, COVID permitting. Um, so we'll, we'll be looking at uh, what dates we're going to be able to set this up, depending on how things go with, with the pandemic. So we are thrilled to have you join us tonight, Jeff, and welcome. Now, yeah. I'm going to just remind everybody, I've muted everybody, but Jeff is quite happy to take questions throughout this. Um, so um, take it away, Jeff, and if you would like to ask him a question, just unmute yourself. Sure thing. Um, and how long do I, remind me how long do I have? Is it an hour or an hour and a half? A generous hour, maybe hour, gen almost, generous almost hour. an hour and a half. I'll give you a five minute yeah, heads up. That's fine, that's fine. I'll, I'll keep on paint until you tell me to shut up. Okay, so um, hi folks. Uh, one thing that, uh, that young Anne didn't uh, mention is that we should, we've shown together many times over the years we shoot together first in the Silk Purse Gallery in West Vancouver, uh, and then subsequently other places, including um, Peachland and uh, Armstrong. And uh, yeah, so we, so Anne and I go go way back. So if if I'm crap, you can you can blame her, okay? So uh, and as Kit was saying, I'm happy to take questions, um, especially for something like this, which is already uh, you know on the way uh, if you have questions about how it's got to where it is you're more than welcome to ask ask questions if but I'm happy to answer que unrelated questions uh, to this if general questions um, uh, mainly our questions would be good uh, but any questions uh, as long as they're not too offensive I'll, I'll attempt to answer them okay so um, what we have here, we've got a acrylic painting, 24 by 24, deep dish canvas. Um, it comes gessoed, but I've added uh, an extra layer of gesso. Um, I do the sketch using a digital projector. Um, and then I build up a series of transparent washes. These have been done. You can still see this, these poking out, but I'm now in the stage of um, uh, building up the layering uh, to give it that, that depth of colour. Um, mainly what I'm using is, uh, well exclusively what I'm using is golden acrylics, um, various colours. I'll discuss the colour uh, combinations as I go along um, and introduce them. Um, if, if you're not clear about the, the colours I'm using, just ask and I'll explain them. Um, the brushes, um, main one is a half inch angle, opus, uh, half inch bright, opus, third of an inch bright, quarter of an inch bright, okay? So these are the, the main four at this stage. For the most part, it'll be, it'll be this one and this one, okay? Uh, those are the instruments of torture. Um, any questions before we start? Hearing none, I will assume that we are good to go. Uh, so uh, I've built this up 
mainly from a combination of um, kind of muted darks, light, um, but quite a strong structure within this one. Because most of the structure is down here, there's a lot of space up here, it's important to, um, uh, to have quite a lot of structure to the water further up. Okay, it kind of balances the, uh, the composition. And we'll show you the reference image that I'm working from. It is a, uh, it's a shot of, uh, of a tugboat below Lionsgate Bridge. Um, and I caught it cycling over there one time. And uh, so you have, you have quite a, a lot of turbulence here, a lot, a lot less turbulence here. This is the wake of the tug. Okay. Okay. So uh, I guess I'll, I'll get started on this one to give you an idea of, of what I'm doing. So we want to have, we want to start off with some, uh, uh, some tight and white. Okay. And, I, and as I'm, and as I am uh, mixing, I'll flip down the camera to show you the palette uh, as and when, okay? And the idea but with, with doing a demo on a piece that's halfway through is to talk about the process rather than to do some kind of miracle in, uh, in an hour, okay? To give, you a, to give you a sort of an idea of what I'm working with. Okay, diox purple, diox is in purple. Okay, a bit of that. Uh, a bit of shallow blue. In this case, uh, let's go with some shallow blue green shade. Um, I've got red shade as well because I'm almost out of green shade. Uh, green shade is what I normally use, but but I'll but any any shallow blue in a in a in a storm. Okay, those uh, those two. Oh, and shallow green. So shallow green. This is uh, yellow, green, yellow shade. I normally use the shallow green blue shade, um, but I picked up the wrong tube. That's fine. No big deal. Uh, okay. Okay, so you can see I'm working with a, a, one of these wipe clean uh, sort of plastic uh, palettes, pretty good for that kind of thing. So, um, start off by mixing up a little bit. Oops. So, a bit of tight and white, a bit of thallo blue. A bit of diox purple, maybe a bit more thallo blue, a bit more diox purple, but a touch of green. Pretty, pretty intense. So we're working in, in this this corner here. So what I'm doing is I'm a series of horizontal and vertical strokes. I can't quite see that corner, uh, Jeff. If you could tilt the camera back. The Perfect. Yeah, that'll That's be good. Okay. okay. Yeah, if you're if I'm not doing something right, just tell me. I won't uh, <laughs> I won't take it personally. Okay, so what we're trying to do is give a, a an impression of the uh, of the, uh, the about the turbulence. Okay, but we're using mixtures, slightly different mixtures of these three components to add um, a depth to the color. Okay, with the two colors. You got quite a good depth of three colors. If you're confident enough to use them, um, then you can just a little bit more, you know. And, um, uh, and this, this combination of the thallo blue, thallo green, and purple is pretty flexible for a lot of uh, far away objects. It can be a mountain range. Um, it can be um, can be water. 
it can be a variety of things. Um, yeah, you know, and uh, just add a bit more, a bit more light here, a bit more green, a bit more green, a bit more white. Okay, so we're up into this quadrant here. And you'll notice as I move to the front, you're moving from quite long continuous strokes to much shorter choppy strokes. And that gives you that illusion of depth. Okay. And it's um it's just uh it's just a trick. You know, you're not really the waves are no are no bigger or smaller further away than they are closer, but it does give you that illusion of, of distance. So you're obviously building this up in layers, Jeff. Do you have any idea yeah. how many layers you would end up with in the end? Um, at any given point, uh, I would suspect there's four to five layers of paint over any, any particular point. That'd be my guess. Yeah. Oh, and we're getting to the week and there's, uh, and in the week, there's also some highlights uh, of quinacridone magenta, quin magenta. It's kind of a, it's a fun version of red, I guess is how I'm using it. I use it in the same way as purple. It's a good thing um, to modify other ones. You seldom see the magenta on its own, but uh, you'll often see it just as a complement. So, it mixes quite well with the green, so you can see this kind of okay. And so we bring this down, and uh, we're back into the sort of darker blues and purples. Touch of green as well, and the. And these are a lot, a lot shorter. But you can, there's still some white uh, from the original canvas still poking through. But gradually, as you fill that in, it, uh, it, it, get, it gets its depth. Now, the good Thallow, the thallows and the dioxidine, because they're all kind of hydrocarbon based artificial colors, they all move very well with titanium white. Okay, so, so you get the idea with regard to the water. I don't want to dwell on that too much. Uh, there's some, some little bit pieces. And you just add, you add some white, some of these white horses at the point where you already have some light, uh, some light brush strokes just to highlight them. It gives you quite a nice feeling. And I'm using a, a third of an inch bright for this. There's your wake. And it's pretty white. So I'm just, I'll just, you just build this up from a series of dabs. Oops. A series of dabs. Build that up. Yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, moving on to some of the more formal structure uh, of this. Um, so it's pretty dark over here. It's kind of a very Oops, it's kind of a very dark, uh, it's kind of a very dark. Green blue. So I'll add a bit of umber. A bit of Payne's Grey. There's some Payne's Grey. So it's kind of a, it's kind of almost like an Alazam Crimson. <coughs> green <coughs> combo. So just use 
Queen's grey, maybe a bit of the, the Quinn magenta, um, and maybe a bit of the green, just to give us a very dark, kind of quite a lustrous dark, a bit more, a bit more grey in there. Oh, you're still freezing up, Jeff. These are still freezing up. Yeah, you're still freezing up. I I don't know I'm if not you're getting any warnings at mind. Yeah. Yeah, you're back. I'm back. Okay. Well, we'll see, we'll see how long we can we can do this. I'll, I'll see what else I can do. And so here you have this this kind of build up of very dark and uh, kind of grayish. Sorry, Jeff. Can I just ask you again what colors you use for the darks because it kept breaking sure. up. Yeah, yeah. So when it's when it's in the in the pure dark here, I'm using um, dioxazine purple and Payne's grey. And um, as it, as it's coming out on this side, it's a mixture of uh, magenta, green, and a bit of Payne's grey and a bit of titanium white. It's kind of giving you this kind of dark green, red, like crimson red feel. Um, there's some darker points in here just to bring out the and these are mainly a, a, a mixture of square square brush strokes at an angle and just kind of build these up. Um, in the far side here, it's more like a very dark purple blue. So, uh, just the color blue. Oh, a, bit, a bit more of that. And uh, I'll use this angle brush for that. And so it's a, uh, it's kind of sallow blue with a bit of, uh, a bit of diox purple, maybe a bit of white. Bit more diox purple, so it's a very dark, very dark uh, color. It's still quite vivid. You know, this this color combination it adds quite a lot of luster uh, and depth to, to often what is very a very dark combination. So I'll add a bit of that to the water. There's a bit of that on the water here. Yeah. And here you have some, you have some highlights. And you're you're not really filling in anything particularly discreet. You're you're mainly building up kind of the impression of um, of the shape of these bumpers. Okay, so you, so you get the idea of of the bumpers more than the. So you're, you're just creating this gradual change from dark through to light as you come around the, the structure of it. Take that down to the water, mash it up a little bit with the wake. There's a bit more of red up here. 
And for that, I use a transparent red, transparent, transparent red iron oxide. It's my kind of go-to for anything rusty and old. It's a good, again, it's a good mixing color. Goes well with uh, diox purple, um, Indian yellow, or uh, or yellow ochre, uh, burnt umber for any for any buildings that kind of thing. But for vehicles, it's, uh, it's a nice way to add a pinch of color in what can often be quite a, a monochrome. Kind of, uh, kind of thing. And you're just adding, you're just going around the vehicle, adding bits and pieces where you think it might, it might fit in. Put a bit in there, put the back here. Yeah, nice. We still have a bit of the line work sticking out here, and I can address that. We've got a bit, we've got some straight titanium white. Paint these out. Straight titanium white there on the side here. The edge of this tire under here. This one here. The side here. And with the titanium white, you can you can fit it on pretty strong if you want to obliterate anything, but you can you can kind of feather it on just to make something slightly paler, you know. And that, that can be quite a nice thing to do. A couple of tall white ones there. You've got a button there, button there, button there, button there. And um, yeah, that's pretty good. A bit more tight and white there. Bit here, a bit more here. On these tires, Got more there. On these tires, under the tires, you've got a bit of reflection. And that's kind of blending in with the uh, the red iron oxide. It's a subtle thing, but it is there. There's the white, white, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's pretty good. We've got a little, we need a little bit more work in these. So uh, I'm gonna take that that same, um, that's a greenish, bluish, purplish combo. And of course, when you put everything, you put something through a window, it turns it more green. So there's a bit more green in the water, which is coming through the window, slightly darker, slightly greener. We'll just add a few dabs like so, so it gives the illusion of the water. And then continue along. Yeah, like so. Down here. A bit of the same color. I'll just add it in. Yeah, that's pretty good. We'll go back to the larger half inch, half inch bright, mix up a bit more of that blue, green, purple, just put in a shum. Quite intense, short dabs to the edge of the shadow of the ship. And this is quite an intense color. It, and it's this where you get this real nice combination of the three. It really gives it a punch that uh, is hard to uh, get any other way. And when you're coming in under here, 
You got some of that, add a bit of white to that combination. Just to light up this, this shadow a little bit. Just dib dab across again, not uh, just the idea, the notion of the of the wake and the waves. So you're getting this mixture of blue dab, short blue and green dabs. A little bit more blue on those on those very light ones. And then on top of them we just dab them in like so. Short, stubby, kind of dabbing back and forth. So you get so it gives you that feel so you can see the difference between the length of the brush from here and the length of the brush from here. Okay. It's more intense towards the front, there's lighter and darker uh, and more distinctive. So it just gives you that illusion of depth. Now right under the boat you've got quite a deep shadow so I'll just use some purple, some Payne's grey, some, add that in. Not, not too far. Oh, there's a bit, a bit there, which is dark. And here you can't really see where the boat stops and the wake starts. So I'll just Scrumble that in. And add a bit more, a bit more structure to here. You can't see the interior of the object, but you can see the edge quite clearly. Yeah, so that's a little bit unclear in this with this illumination, but it is there. Okay, um, we've got some, um, some little verticals here. I'll put them in, just a straight uh, blue-purple combo. And we've got the edge of the tire, and you've got kind of a stanchion, and you've got these three pipes, and they are one, two, three, more or less more or less and I'll just fill in some lighter in between just to highlight that. And then at the base of them it's very dark again. Very dark. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of nice. I'll add a bit more of that to here, a bit more of that to here to the front. Um, maybe a bit more in the lee of these tires here. Yeah, a bit more under there, a bit more under there. Okay, that's good. That's kind of nice. This could do with a bit more structure here, so I'll go back to my um, to my half inch bright. This is a, bit, a little bit lighter than here, so uh, again, that's a green, a bit more, oops, a bit more green, a bit of blue, a bit of green, touch of purple, yeah, and short, stubby, greenish blue. There are a bit more darks in here, so I'll mix up a darker version of that green, blue and purple. And then mark the underside of some of these waves. Maybe more blue and purple than green. I don't, you don't, you don't really have these further back. Uh, over here, we do have them. 
And putting these in has the effect of bringing this forward. This combination of the light and dark and short and distinct brush strokes that gives you that sense of uh, that sense of proximity. A little bluer round round the side here. I like the way you, you get around the edge of the canvas and paint those e those darn edges while you're at it. I keep forgetting to do that. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I, haven't, I haven't done it rigorously. It is. Um, let, me, let me just fill it in a little bit since you've uh, since you've reminded me. Do you like to paint that at the same time as you're painting the the front, Jeff? Uh, I don't like to, but it's a good habit. <laughs> sometimes I do, and sometimes I don't. If I'm a good kid, I do. If I'm a bad kid, I don't. Out. That looks okay. That looks okay. Just kind of a mid-tone. I'll add a bit more dark mid-tone, mid-tone blue purple further up. And uh, I'll fill that in. Yeah, okay. That's probably good enough. Um, add a bit more, a few more dark. Yeah, use that to dry a bit. The other side. So it's lighter by comparison, so I'll add a, a lighter. Oops, still a bit lighter than that. Yeah, that's good. Paying attention to get the angle right. If you get the angle wrong, it looks really weird when you look at it from the side. Okay. That's pretty good. Okay. Add a bit more depth up here. Long, continuous lines. Okay, so we're on 35 minutes. Everybody still with me? Nobody getting bored? Is it time to shut up? I just did a check. Everybody's awake. Yeah, everybody awake? <laughs> yeah, now we're, we're starting. We're starting to get your accent now. You're hilarious. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, okay, so there's a bit more white in there. And it, it, with this kind of build up, it kind of looks crap for a long time, and then all of a sudden, it looks great, you know. And it's not, you don't really know it's going to happen, and then it happens, and you think, oh, okay, well, that was pretty good. But you, you just keep on building them up, and, and at some point, just the underlying canvas disappears, and you're left with this. Of lovely kind of overlapping brush stroke kind of character with quite a lot of color depth, you know, and uh, you know it has that's pretty good. Maybe a bit more. Maybe a biggest good. tip for painting turbulated water, Jeff. Sorry. What would be your biggest tip for painting like rough water? Turbulent like water. Yeah. Well, it's it's your. It's this kind of water here, right? And if it's turbulent, chances are you're, it's close to you. And well, I guess th this is turbulent, right? It's the turbulence of the wake that produces this turbulence, but it manifests as a flat surface. If you're talking about choppy water, um, it's, it's these kind of, you, you want to be able to, I guess you would assume that you're able to see the individual um, waves, and for that you need you want quite short choppy strokes with a lot of light and a lot of dark. Okay, further away it's more monochrome. With you can still see the you can still see the waves, but they're a lot longer, more continuous, more overlapping. Okay, this is more This is intuitively more turbulent than this as you're looking at it. 
because you can see more of the, the brush strokes. So it's light and, more light and dark. That, does that make sense? That does, thank you very much. And you, what you want to do is you want, you want to move back and forth like this uh, to with a natural phenomenon like this. It, it's not evenly distributed, okay? It's like it's like doing when you do um, um, uh, uh, a, a, a picture of birches. They shouldn't all be parallel. They should all be at an angle, more or less straight, but not absolutely straight. In the same way, these are more or less in the right the same angle, but they're not evenly distributed, okay? There's some little the the, the distribution is not is not continuous, not even. So and it looks more natural that way. Okay? So you just work your way around the canvas, just adding bits and pieces, and hoping for the best. You know, and if it if you do it right, it'll come out. If you don't do it right, it just looks super lame. Um, yeah. If would it be possible for you to show the reference photo again, so we can just see? Sure thing. Again, what you're working on? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If it comes crashing down, you're to blame. <laughs> That's okay. I'm on the job. Okay. So. Uh, let's do a bit more on the on the waves here. I'll get back into the small brush, and you'll notice that uh, when I'm doing this, I, I'm just kind of running around the canvas from one thing to another, uh, just kind of filling things in. I don't. Uh, I know a lot of artists who systematically work through your painting section by section. Um, I admire that kind of uh, attention to detail. I don't have that kind of uh, temperament. And you've got the chimney like so. And it's kind of a, it's kind of a very pale green at the edge of that. Uh, you've got the water, kind of greenish purple, peeking through here. Peeking through, peeking through. Peeking through there, there again, there again, there again. And then in the shadow, the sort of the shadow of the of the metal work is kind of a, a very pale blue purple. Um, so it's a stalo blue diox purple combo, which I uh, I use probably more than I should. I use it for a lot of uh, a lot of water, a lot of metal work, a lot of shadows. No, it's not super different from the the color in the the water at the back, uh, and you sort of highlight, you distinguish it from the water at the back by using from the from the horizontal strokes. Okay, that's what's going to tip you off that you're at the back versus the front. You got a shadow coming over here, coming down. Then you've got kind of a light thing 
going down like that, come down like that. We've got kind of a white doodad sticking up. Jog a little bit over, same again here. There it goes, white, slight shadow here. Merge into a slight shadow here. That's a little too dark. Lighten it up a little bit. That's more like it. And it's quite a subtle thing often, this shadow. There it's quite sharp, it's quite subtle. Yeah, okay, that's good. A bit more here, a bit more with the green in here. That's a bit green, a bit more green under there, under there, under there. Coming around a little bit. Then you're back into the tires again. And there's kind of a very pale green in this light. Then going around to the red, so there's the green, a bit green, a little bit green. Yeah. And then a uh, little purple under here, darker. As you get around, that's quite a bit darker, maybe, maybe too purple, but that'll do for now. And then you get into the, uh, the band across the center. Quite dark, quite dark, dark here, and a little bit of white, a bit more blue as you come around, it lightens up a little bit, dark there again, and then as you're coming around, you lighten it right up, you bring it around, and it just gives you that sense of it moving around. Um, above it is a yellow. I, I am using a uh, uh, cadmium yellow light. Um, out of all the yellows, it's the one I use the most. The cadmium yellow medium is fine, but it's a bit dull often. The Hansas, uh, I want to like them, but they don't have. They never seem to have the right coverage. So. Uh, a bit of uh, under here, add a bit of uh, red iron oxide. It's quite a nice colour. It's maybe more of a yellow purple, in fact, but we'll put up with that for now. Come around and again here again. Yeah, that's good. And you've got some down here also. That's good enough. A bit more work in the windows, blue purple. Oh, blue purple, a bit more white. A bit more purple, a bit more blue. Let's feather that in. Could be a little lighter. Than that, that'll be fine for now. You've got a bit of an edge here, you've got a wiper blade here, a bit over here, fill that in a little bit, add a bit more structure down here, oops, a bit more structure down here as it comes out from the shadow. Maybe some highlights on those. That's maybe too much of a highlight, but it'll do for now. A bit more here. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. Around here, you've got a very pale red iron oxide. 
and quite a sharp contour at the top of the tires just to highlight that structure. So just dab that in short, quite just quite quite distinctive brush strokes. You got a bit of red on a bit of red on top of the on top of these stanchions. That merges in with a darker red red purple. Under there, sharp. Bit of that in the, the tires, a bit more in the tires, a bit more in the tires. Okay, well that's good. Um, the edges of the, uh, the edges of the windows can be can be quite good to highlight. Now um, they're mainly green, so maybe use a bit of magenta to highlight them. And we just use the quarter of an inch brush just put in the edge. Now you've got a you've got a bit of reflection in here so add that once you're coming around it's more of a it's more of a shadow. It's more of a sort of a green purple. So more of the green purple, a bit of white. Like so, just single strokes. You don't need much, just enough to give you the impression of a hard edge. It doesn't, have to, it doesn't even, even have to be that hard. It can just be, you know, a little circle there, a little more circle there, a little bit of light, a bit of an edge. The light, a bit of a light edge there, a bit of a light edge here, a bit more there, a bit of a light edge there, 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 there. Yeah, that's good. And then again, once you're back into the light, it's more of a red iron oxide. Red iron oxide, maybe a bit of yellow edge. Edge, edge, edge. An edge around this one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Top of the boat, again, can be quite good to edge it. Now, what's the, what color are we going to use for that? Okay, so that's, that's in shadow. So let's use a, a blue and purple edge. Blue and purple, darker than the water. Just there, there, there. You can overpaint it, but it's just to give you a bit of structure on the top of the boat here. And then this side of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. A little bit more under there. Of a circle here. Uh, we've got some some black, so I'll just use up some some of the Payne's Gray and Dax purple. We've got kind of a bit of black there on the underside here. This here, this here, this here, this here. Bit of the circle highlighted bit there, a bit more there, a bit there. I'll add a bit of white to that uh, to that dark grey, and that's for the top of your for the top of the chimney. It's not quite black; it's a little dark. And this side, yeah, okay. Pardon me. That's quite a bit on the, on the structure, um, and there's just a little bit of green, a little bit of green highlight, just in here. A bit more there, a bit more there. A bit of a shadow over here, just lighten up a little bit. 
shadow there, but white, but a last bit of that, but here. Just work your way around it. Yeah, it's pretty good. This needs to be hardened up a little bit. So I'll just uh, I'll just go back in with um, with a third of an inch bright and just sharpen up this edge. I'm going to mix up the that sort of blue green purple combo for the water. A bit of tight and white and just just go along dabbing it in. Just harden up that edge. Yeah, that's good. And it's a lot lighter up at the top there, so I'll add a bit of tight and white. And in between all the doodads at the top, there's quite a lot of light, so. Let's Um, there's still a few bit, white bits sticking out, so maybe what I'll do is upside down. That tells you uh, where where you're where you're sticking out. So so there's still a few bits here which are pretty rough. So this allows me to just highlight those bits that are. Are pretty rough. Because you're not seeing the object when it's upside down. What you're just seeing is a bunch of colours and and lines where where the where the lines aren't supposed to be. And the shadow underneath here. And these are not big changes that you're making when it's upside down. You're you're just kind of filling in bits that should have been done earlier on, you know. But for whatever reason, they've, they've just persisted until now. And you're not really changing the structure. You're just filling in the little bits that have persisted. When you turn it back up, it will be more convincing. Uh, we have a bit of a maybe a little darker than that. Yeah, okay. around filling in those little bits and pieces. What are we at? 55 minutes. Okay. Yeah, you're good for another 15 or 20 there. <laughs> That's generous. <laughs> okay. So um, I can see quite a bit of white in here still. So uh, I'll mix up a bit, a bit more of that blue-green uh, purple combo. Oh, assuming that's purple. Okay. A bit more blue, I think. A bit more purple. Oh, yeah. I'll just dab it in. I probably shouldn't use this brush actually. I'll use the 
grade for that. What's uh, what makes you choose a braid over the angle? Like, what's the difference you find between the two? The um, for these longer continuous ones, the the angle is better. For short, distinct uh, brush strokes. So, for example, if you are building up brickwork on a building, um, you want to use a, a braid. It gives you kind of kind of. It has quite a lot of it quite has quite a lot of um uh, quite a lot of uh, paint in the uh, in the in the brushes, uh, but it gives you quite a distinctive uh, stroke. Okay, there's less mixing and, and ambiguity around the edges, uh, whereas the uh, the angle brush has a bit it's a bit more uh, it mixes a bit more, you know. So it's a bit, you know, sort of a softer stroke. Uh, is that it? Or? Slightly softer stroke. Yeah, it gives you a longer stroke, but slightly softer. Yeah. Okay. And further out here, a little bit darker. And we're getting a lot, this is this paint's getting a little dry, so I'll add a bit of add a bit of medium, just to, I should probably use the angle for that. One. Yeah, so these longer, more ambiguous ones, the, the angle brush is a lot more effective. These are also quite old brushes, uh, so uh, the um, the angle brush can give you quite a lot of precision in your in your brush strokes when it, when you have a new angle brush. This one's well, it's a few months old now, so. Um, uh, it, there's really not much detail left in this brush. You know. That's an interesting you, way of putting it. <laughs> not much detail sorry? left in the brush. I think that's an interesting way of putting it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. When we turn it back around, it's a bit more convincing. There's less of the um, there's less of the canvas showing through, almost none. And um, yeah, there's still, still quite a bit of magenta that I'm not getting up at the top there. Yeah, oh, but not quite that magenta. Uh, do you down. use any mediums with your paint? Um, right. No, I'm using a, just a tiny bit of medium because my paints are drying out. Uh, with me talking uh, uh, over them, they're, they're getting dried out by the hot air. Um, for the start of painting, I use a lot of medium. Um, for the but stage, not a lot. And then at the end, um, when I finish the painting, I use medium to... Um, to uh, uh, to do a top to do the ice pressure coat. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Jeff, when I look at you doing this, I think if I was doing that, this painting would look so overworked by now. It would be terrible. When I look at you, yours, it still looks very fresh. So, well, um, what's the deal there? Um, I'm not. Although I'm doing a lot of effort, there's not much paint actually going on the canvas. Okay. It's a pretty, it's a pretty dry brush. Okay. Right? Yep. Uh, and um, when I when I when I've shown this to students, the first thing is fill it in blue. Okay. And so this has been built up from a whole series of over several several sessions. 
um, just gradually building it in and it's dry brushing it um, in. Like you can, even after all this time, there's still quite a lot, of, there's still a bit of canvas showing through, right? So, uh, wow. Yeah, okay. So it's more of a dry brush approach. Yeah. I mean, I do use some medium, but it's mainly just individual strokes, dry brushing, dry brushing up. And, um, and, 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 and using these combinations of colors, you know, you just have green, everything will look green. If you have uh, green and blue, it'll look green and blue. Uh, if you have blue purple, it'll look blue purple. But if you're using three or four different colors in in kind of a, a rotation, um, it gives you quite a lot of depth. Now, of course, not everybody's super confident about doing that. I know I'm not, but uh, I've, I've, I've kind of developed it over the years simply uh, that I'm not getting the I'm not getting the colours that I'm looking for. They just look too phony, you know. And I, I say I'm not. I'm not really. Uh, I really could not claim to be an expert in it. Um, but you just kind of um, just keep on going and hope for the best, you know. But each, each I mix up enough for about half a dozen strokes. And then I, I use it and then I mix it up again. And every time you mix it, it has a slightly different consistency, a slightly different color. So you're, you're building up a lot of subtly different, uh, subtly different colors within, within a, a, a spectrum. You know, does that make sense? So it means that there is yes, yeah, the thing you get is appears quite rich. Yes. You know, and I can't say this is what I use for, I mean, I, I certainly have my, my fair share of overworked canvases, uh, but with the water, um, this, I, I've just kind of, kind of fallen into this way of doing water and it seems to work, you know. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff, so maybe we can work towards um, wrapping it up a little. I'll give you yeah, your five minute finish. warning. <laughs> oh, uh, that's fine. I'll call it finished now. Give you, give you more time for questions. So, um, so I'll just give you a summary of what we've, what we've done here. So I started off on this side, built up some more of this kind of choppy blue purple worked back over here to this more sort of continuous sort of magenta green blue kind of combo in the wake of the boat. Um, worked my way down, added a bit more, some, sh some shorter, uh, stubby, uh, stronger, more color, more uh, variation kind of things. Um, gone into the, the metal work, added a bit more depth to here, added some of these square kind of Dib dab back and forth to give you the, the color of the bumpers. Um, kind of going into the metal work here to add the shadow of the metal work, highlight of the metal work, um, strengthened up some of the edges here, done a bit more work in the back end. These still really aren't properly resolved. Um, added a bit more to the wake, um, worked my way around it. Turn it upside down for a bit, filled in some of the darks, some of the, the, the bits where the, the, uh, the canvas is sticking through. Um, it, uh, worked on the edges here, just to sharpen up those edges. And a bit of the sides, just on that finish, a bit of the way. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Jeff. That was amazing. Um, I, I'm sure that everybody really, really enjoyed watching you paint 
And we're really excited to, um, to invite you through in, in the spring. So looking forward to the workshop. Thanks very much. Does anybody have any questions before we hang up? I was just wondering, Jeff, if you could uh, take a photo of the painting so that we can actually see a good photo of it up close. Kit can put it posted on our website or send it out to us. Yeah, I'll, um, it's going to be torrential rain uh, tomorrow. Um, but let, let, let me take a photograph uh, when the sun comes out again before I do any more work on it and you can get a, a good idea. Perfect. That'd, that'd be great Jeff because it's a little grainy and, and we never can see it as well as as if you get a good photo so that'd be perfect. Uh, I'll send it out to the members. Yeah and I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I think the sun comes out again maybe Thursday or Friday. I'll take a photograph and send it to you Kit. I thought you were going to say when the sun comes out in the spring. <laughs> yeah. No, we we uh, we still have a bit of sun here, you know, a bit of sun. Not enough to grow grapes, but uh, good good for the hops. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. Any other questions, guys? Any other comments or? Uh, I just have one quick question. Yes, please. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, your golden paints, are you using open or just regular golden paints? Regular heavy body. Okay. And they, they don't dry out too fast, obviously. Well, I mean, they do dry out. I mean, uh, but it depends how fast you're working. I mean, uh, I put out kind of that amount and I'll work through that in the course of the morning. And some of them are, some of them are dry. So I just scrape off at lunchtime and then start again uh, the next day, you know. So you do get a bit of wastage, but um, I mean, I'm powering through quite a lot of paint. Uh, Cause I, I paint three hours a day, Monday to Friday. So, you know, for something like, like this here, you go through a lot of red and orange and I work at quite a large scale. so. The wastage isn't material in the overall scheme of things. And what I'll do at the end of the session, so um, at the end of the session, I'll, if, the, if I think it's still dry, I'll take the, uh, I'll take the excess and put it back in the tube. Oh, like I so. see. Mm -hmm. So certain paints are prone to drying out more than others. Um, so the, 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 the thalos and the dioxazines and the quinacridones they don't dry out so quickly. Uh, things like burnt umber and uh, the Titan of White and the cadmiums, um, uh, ochre, that kind of thing, it dries out pretty fast, you know. So uh, I know by the end of the session, by the end of this, by the end of a session, typically which ones I can uh, realistically put back in the tube and which ones uh, just need to be chucked out. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Just uh, one quick one. Just how many more hours do you think you'd spend on this painting? Um, if I'm in the studio again, I would finish it uh, probably a couple of hours. A couple of hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. couple of hours, especially with a proper with, with proper with, with daylight conditions, with daylight conditions and a large reference image. I'm using the iPad here. Normally, I use a television. So uh, between a, a with a big reference image and natural light, a couple of hours would be would be sufficient. Okay. Yeah. How do you, do you use an isolation coat then, and then uh, varnish, or what do you do? Yeah. So I'll use a I'll, I'll use an isolation coat of medium. Um, so I'll leave, uh, so once I've when I've finished painting, I will uh, I will I'll leave it for a day. You don't, want to, uh, you don't want to put an isolation coat right on the painting because it, it, it brushes on very rough. So I'll leave it for a day or two and then I'll brush on with a three inch, uh, with a, a three inch brush, uh, the, the, this uh, medium, gloss medium. I'll leave it for another day or two. I'll, put it, I'll typically put it on the wall and watch it for a few days to see what needs to be 
changed. So that's the stage that this comes at. It's got the isolation coat, but it hasn't, uh, but I haven't put any varnish on it. So I'll look at it with the isolation coat on it, look at it for a few days, see if it's, if there's anything that needs to be changed, anything that's niggling me. And after that, I'll go back and then I'll put on a couple of layers of gloss varnish. And then you leave it for one to two weeks on the wall and then you can pack it away to, you can ship it or pack it away or, or whatever you want to do with it. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> Lovely. Okay, any, any, any painting or non, non demo related questions? No? What's your favorite color? Out of curious, curiosity, what's your favorite color? Well, probably, probably my students from North Vancouver would, 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 would answer that. Uh, they, they, every time I say that bringing the purple, it's say, oh, it's Jeff's purple. So it's not my favorite color to look at, but it's the one I use the most, I would say. It informs almost every other color I use. I use a bit of purple in there. Wow. Yeah. But uh, for, for sheer impact, um, Salo, uh, the, the naphthol red light is, is pretty hard to beat. So for something like this, I'll use um, uh, naphthol red light. Mm -hmm. Naphthol red light. It's a real fine alarm kind of red. And then uh, I used to use cadmium orange, but uh, it's, it's not quite strong enough. So I've taken to using this pearl orange <laughs> and it's, it's really intense. It's a really intense color. So for, the, for something that's kind of incandescent like this, that color combination works pretty well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, well, that's great. Good. Well, thank you so much, Jeff. That was very insightful. And I know I learned so much there. That, thank you so much. That was, that was mm -hmm. great. And uh, thank you everyone for tuning in here tonight. I think we'll yep. uh, wrap up this meeting and uh, yeah, round of applause from everyone. <laughs>